To trace or not to trace, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to draw free hand and suffer out of proportion eyes, nose, and mouths, or to turn on the projector and outline all that you see and create a sketch quickly, but knowing you've been helped. <laughs> Hi, Matt Filio here in the studio. Today we're going to talk about tracing. Is it okay? Is it not okay? Why is it beneficial to do it? How do you go about doing it? I'm going to not only talk about whether tracing is okay or not okay, I'm going to demonstrate how to do it. And I have a canvas I'm working on right now. Let's get into this. Here's the project I'm working on. This is an 11 by 14 portrait uh, for Russell Stendhal's book on Isaiah. It's a commentary. Um, I did the photo for this, posed for it myself. I have it up on my Kindle here next to my canvas so that I can see what I'm doing as I trace. And I've got my overhead projector. This is a Verizon 2 Apollo projector. And if you do tracing, I would recommend that you use one of those old fashioned transparency projectors. You can see my image right here. And all you need to do is go to the office supply store. Once you have your projector, buy some uh, transparency film. It fits into your computer printer. It's conveniently sized at eight and a half by 11. You can resize your image on Photoshop or GIMP or some other app and uh, get it just to the size you need. This is like two by two inches and I have them projecting upward and onward onto my canvas. And so I'm using a colored pencil to trace with. I just like the feel of colored pencil. You could use a graphite pencil. But before we begin, the question about tracing, is it okay, is it not okay? Well, I believe it is okay if you've spent time doing freehand sketching. Um, I actually did freehand sketching uh, for quite a while uh, before I started doing portrait drawing. I uh, did my uh, favorite band Metallica uh, when I was 14 and made it look fo photorealistic after having drawn for several years. Um, and that has proved to be very beneficial to me in my portrait painting. Um, but I would recommend spending some time doing freehand drawing uh, every day or once a week, whatever you can commit to. It will pay off dividends in your portrait painting. Um, but here we go on the sketch. For tracing, you just basically want to start off on the outside edges. And all I want to do is just see the major forms. And tracing is not going to do all the work for you. Um, but one of the benefits of tracing is that it does force you to see the shapes created by the values. And so as I'm sketching this hair, it, it makes me think about where my major tonal value differences are going to be. And what I do then is I just simply block them off, maybe shade them in really quick just to represent that this is going to be darker when I'm painting it. I'm going to fill in the uh, information for the ears. You want to keep your pencil really sharp. So I'm just going to sharpen it here. And we're going to continue the sketch. So I'm just going to, again, block in the major forms. But again, um, tracing is something that was used by people of history, you know, artists of history like Jan Vermeer did tracing. Cam camera obscura to uh, do his landscape scenes. So it does have historical precedent. And even though some people feel they're, you know, that tracing is cheating, they're very much purists as far as um, you know, not using any aids or guides in their work, um, I would say that uh, tracing is just another way of getting your sketch up there. It's just like a carpenter would use you know, a T-square and uh, plumb bobs and, and laser levels and different things to get their lines accurate. We can definitely use these tools to get some accurate uh, compositions and sketches up before we start painting. Um, the problem is though, if you rely on tracing, you never do any freehand work or grid work. Grid, grid work is kind of a hybrid between freehand sketching and tracing. Uh, and that's the method I use most often for teaching my classes. Uh, because it does help artists to see the proportions and it gives them an aid and a guide 
to uh, create an accurate likeness without having spent years developing their skills as uh, uh, freehand sketchers. But anyway, just all that to say that if you only do tracing and you never do freehand sketching, uh, you're not cheating, but you are cheating yourself. Uh, you're cheating yourself out of that experience that you would get if you spent some time doing freehand sketching. Um, but again, freehand sketching can be very beneficial. Uh, in my case here, I have a lot of commission portraits to do. I'm kind of backed up on work uh, because I teach classes and I do commission art as well. And instead of taking, you know, a couple hours to do a freehand sketch, or maybe I could do this in an hour, but instead of taking an hour, two hours, you know, I'm going to take maybe about 10, 15 minutes here to trace this instead. And so it is saving me a little bit of time. And, you know, um, I have taken that time over the years to do freehand sketching, and I still do freehand sketching to this day. Um, so it is a good thing to do once in a while. Um, so I think tracing is perfectly okay. What we're doing is blocking in, again, the major differences in tonal value. And tracing is beneficial for that. Really, you're going to get a better sense of where those shapes reside when you do tracing um, than when you simply do freehand sketching. Although certainly doing freehand sketching, you, you can see those shapes as well. But this just makes it easier for you because the projector does that heavy lifting for you. It does the outline for you. So you can see those shapes. You still have to make the decision where the major differences in tonal value begin and end. And so when I begin to paint on this, I'll be able to say this is my darker tonal value, this is my lighter tonal value. And by the way, we want to convert um, in a sketch basically everything to just two tonal values, like, like you're doing a chiaroscuro painting. Um, so you just have your dark value, your light value, and then you, know, you can add on top of that, you can do some dark areas within the major mid-tone dark value. You can add some highlights on top of your lighter mid-tone um, and give more depth to it. But just to break it down to two tonal values will make it very simple for you. And again, tracing allows you to see those shapes and it'll get you thinking about that as you do um, uh, sketches using the grid method or freehand sketching. And I'm going to get these little shapes in here so we have some highlights on the fingers. And this uh, image here is showing a person deep in prayer and intercessory prayer. And I do pray, God, that you would bless this painting and help me to be able to uh, do it with excellence and help the artists watching this tutorial. You would bless them in all of their work, too, and guide them into whatever you want them to create. In Jesus' name, amen. I should have prayed at the beginning, but it's never too late to pray. Um, anyway... So now I have this sketch pretty much delineated. I can add some more to it. Um, I can fill this in a little bit. But I have the major forms outlined. Let's get this shadow in below the hand. And then we'll get a, a little bit of a shadow right here on the lower side of the arm. Just block it in quickly. Just kind of using the side of the pencil. And then this lets me know that when I'm painting that these are the areas that should be um, filled in with color first to get those major tonal forms created and get some three-dimensionality, turn the form, create that three-dimensional effect right away as soon as possible. Um, but again, the, the purpose of this video here is to show you uh, that tracing can be done, that it can be beneficial, it's not cheating. Um, and it's something though that you have to be cautious of that you don't do it all the time and that you do learn how to do some freehand sketching as well. And now let's turn off the projector, see what we have. All right, you can see the image that's left behind here. And you know, I can go in and tighten this up a little bit. Um, so even when you trace, it doesn't always give you all the visual information you need. You know, I can add some more detail to the eyes to get the expression in there, the eyelids, and get some of the areas of the ear that I missed. But it does give me a pretty good representation of the composition, locks in those forms right away, 
and uh, allows me to move a little quicker with my work. So again, here in this video, I think you can see that tracing is perfectly acceptable to do as long as it's not something that you rely on too much. And you're also doing other methods as well, like the grid technique and the freehand sketching technique. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And you can see my bandaged thumb here, but uh, give it a thumbs up. Hopefully you don't have any cuts on your hands. And uh, subscribe to this channel here for more videos like this. Hit that bell icon to make sure you get notified when I have new videos. And then finally, go to realisticacrylic.com. There at realisticacrylic.com, I have several portrait tutorials, uh, answer many different questions artists have on how to paint portraits, even how to get into doing commission portraiture. If you go there, you'll find the resources helpful, and they're all free. Uh, of course, I do have some paid classes as well that you can take if you uh, want to go further with your portrait painting skills and your training. Uh, but again, thank you so much for watching this video. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in a future video. God bless you, and we'll talk to you soon.